guys, and welcome back to another Lost Bits video right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore video game content that goes unused, altered, or normally unseen. On May 16th, 2020, exactly nine years after the initial launch of the game, Terraria has put out its last major update, fittingly titled Journey's End. Terraria, 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 I'm sure whichever way I say it, someone's gonna get mad, but we'll just stick with Terraria. Anyways, even though I haven't played it much over the years, I'll always remember Terraria being the first game I ever bought on Steam, apparently just over a week from its launch. And just like most games, Terraria also has some unused goodies for us to talk about, so let's get right to it. Go grab your 2D pickaxe, it's time to find some lost bits. Alright, so let's start things off with some enemies that go unused. There are two NPCs that are left over in the game and can actually still be modded in, but they are never normally spawned. First is a jungle variant of a mimic enemy. These behave like the other mimics, but for whatever reason, this variant is left out of the game and normally never spawns. Then there's also this white cultist archer. This appears to be a solar cultist version of the blue cultist archer. Interestingly enough, despite never normally being implemented, there's also an unused unique white cultist archer banner. Since the devs went through the trouble of making this extra item, it's likely it was a later decision to not include these, but why they're lingering around in the game's files is a good question. Now those were the enemies that can still function in the game if loaded in, but next we got several enemies that, while data for them still exists in the game, they are incomplete and as such can't be loaded in at all. First up is this snowman with a dynamite embedded deep in his head, simply known as the Exploding Snowman. The Snowman's NPC ID is right after that of the Frost Legion, made up of Mr. Stabby, Snowman Gangsta, and Snowballa. So based on that and their similarities, the Exploding Snowman was very likely going to be the fourth variant of this squad. The exact reason the Exploding Snowman was scrapped is unclear, but oddly enough, apparently in one of the game's update changelogs, it stated, The Frost Legion is back, now with another member possibly referring to the Exploding Snowman, but this of course never happened. What's even more interesting is that despite never being used, the Exploding Snowman even got its graphics updated in the version 1.3.5 update. Why would the developers remake a sprite for a character that was never used? Perhaps they were still considering introducing him at some point, who knows, but as it stands, the Exploding Snowman never made it in. Sorry fella. Then we got this unused, severed hand enemy that was supposed to appear as part of the Solar Eclipse event. Just like the White Cultist Archer, the Severed Hand 2 has an associated and unobtainable banner. Next up, although the graphics are used, there's NPC data left over for Mini Flow Invaders. These look identical to the minions spawned by the Flow Invaders, but I guess at one point they were intended to be a unique, standalone NPC as well. Similarly, there's unused NPC data for None2, whose image file is the same as that of a Wandering Eye enemy. Its NPC ID actually precedes that of the Wandering Eye, so based on that, and considering its name is literally None2, this was probably some placeholder test enemy. And lastly for the NPCs is one known as DD2 Attacker Test. It apparently looks identical to the angry tumbler enemy, and it is believed that, based on the DD2 and test in the name, this NPC data was used by the developers to test something in the Old Ones Army Dungeon Defenders 2 crossover event. Then, although not an unused NPC, there is an unused alternate sprite of Fritz. Here he just gets a more greenish look, which kinda makes sense since he is a reference to Frankenstein. I guess they had to pick one between the two, and this one ended up winning. Moving on, Terraria has one debuff effect that was never implemented. It's called Dazed, and similar to the Oozed debuff, it was to greatly decrease the affected player's movement speed to a third of normal speed to be exact, and jump height was also to be reduced. This debuff has been around since the version 1.3 update, but never made it to the big leagues. This is unlike the Sugar Rush debuff, which for the longest time was unobtainable until the final 1.4 update, in which it is now obtainable via the Slice of Cake item. And while we're talking about some unused stuff that's now been added in, after being quickly removed from the game when it was first launched for apparent legal reasons, then being introduced as an exclusive item in the 3DS version, the Zappinator has also been reintroduced in an orange and grey variety as part of the Journey's End update. 
So now you can blast away enemies with the totally not NES zapper to your heart's content. Next, this game also has its fair share of miscellaneous unused graphics. First are two unused tile sets of also unused grass types. There's this tile set of yellow-green grass textures titled Tiles to Beach, and based on the name, this was likely intended to be a grass variant for the beach biomes. But instead, the beach biomes just use the regular green grass texture. Then there's also Tiles underscore 199 Gross, which appears to be very similar to the game's flesh blocks. And these tiles were apparently to be some sort of alternate version to the crimson grass. Then next up we got these unused early sprites for the drill containment units, as well as this fella, who is apparently a test graphic for the newly added bestiary. And finally, there's this empty buff texture. This was very likely just used as a template by the developers when making the graphics for the buffs. And now onto my favorite part, Terraria's unused items. So earlier I mentioned the unused banners for the White Cultist Archer and the Severed Hand, but there are also normally unobtainable banners for several other enemies. These include the Blue Cultist Casters and Fighters, the White Cultist Casters and Fighters, Poisonous Spores, and lastly there's an unobtainable Small Star Cell banner. Then, just like the NPCs from before, some normally unobtainable items can still be accessed via mods and inventory editors, while others only have partial remnants left in the game, and as such can't be accessed at all. For the ones that can still be added in, first are several unobtainable Luminite tools. These include the hammers, axes, and chainsaws in the Solar Flare, Stardust, Vortex, and Nebula variety. These were all likely scrapped in favor of the ham axes, which as the name suggests, fulfill the function of a hammer and axe, and even chainsaw I guess, making the respective standalone items redundant. Even so, these still look really cool. Just like the ham axes and pickaxes that are used, these were also likely once planned to be obtainable after defeating the moon boss. Next up we have this unused pixel box. When placed in, these can be hooked up with wires, and the box will light up with an incoming signal from the left or right, and turn off from the top or bottom. Then we also have this white star that surprisingly, despite just being added in the final update, it is normally unobtainable, and even if you do manage to mod it in, it has no function, and interestingly it is listed in the game's files simply as unknown. Also added in this update, but unobtainable, is this Skull Bow, which is apparently believed to have been found in or near the dungeon. I have no idea why the developers would be introducing new, unused things in their seemingly last update, so I have a strong feeling that these might get implemented in maybe a smaller future update. Then the next unused weapon is the First Fractal. Looking like a beefier version of the Terra Blade, apparently this weapon was scrapped in favor of the Zenith Sword. Interestingly enough, Zenith's codename was the Final Fractal, so it's also likely that the First Fractal was an early version of it too. That said though, to further solidify what I said earlier, apparently when asked why this weapon is unobtainable, the developers said that it simply wasn't ready yet. So just like the other items I mentioned prior, this too might get implemented in the future. Anyways, as you guys have been seeing, the first fractal causes a bunch of them in a range of colors to zip across the screen wherever you click, basically decimating enemies on screen in no time at all. Honestly, I think it's super satisfying to watch. Next, there are three treasure bags that are normally unobtainable. First is the Lunatic Cultist Bag, and it is programmed to drop silver coins as well as offer a 14.29% chance of rewarding an Ancient Cultist Mask. Now as a good segue to the unused items that are incomplete in the game and as such have no function, the other two unused treasure bags are an ogre treasure bag, as well as a dark mage one. Each one does have its respective graphic, but that's about it. Next, all unused, there's the Kabold dynamite backpack item, an Ethereum javelin, an ogre mask, a goblin mask, a goblin bomber cap, and an apple pie slice. The apple pie slice was also introduced in the newest update alongside a full apple pie, so I guess the developers just felt the slice might have been redundant. Also, just like the white star, the slice too just carries the name unknown. Next up we got the unused Phasic Warp Ejector, as well as its associated disc projectiles. 
Outside of just being a projectile launcher, its exact effects are currently unknown, but being found situated between the charged blaster cannon and the influx waver, it is believed that the war projector was planned to be related to the Martian Madness event in the game. This item seemingly hasn't been touched since the 1.3 update to the game, so I'd be surprised if it ever gets re-implemented. And lastly here, there's also this bunch of Zeds, and just like the previous items, it doesn't seem to do anything. So up until now, everything I've been referring to is either for the current gen and PC versions of the game, but let's take some time to talk about some items that go unused in the last gen console versions as well as the 3DS. Now these were basically just not added because they stopped receiving support and their last update was the desktop equivalent of between about versions 1.24 and 1.3. I won't go into any details here since these are found in other versions, but I'll quickly just show them on screen. There are also a handful of items that are found in the last gen consoles, but just not in the 3DS version. These include a bunch of watches, a tool belt, and a ruler. Yeah, no measuring in the 3DS world allowed. All of the normally unobtainable items I mentioned up until now still do have remnants found in the game's files, but there are also several other ones that are completely removed from the game. First of these is the Ice Morn, that was added to the game's files as an unobtainable item back in the 1.2 update, but promptly removed in the 1.2.4 update. Its removal, similar to what I discussed earlier with the Zappinator, was likely due to copyright reasons, as its name and likeness resembles that of the Frostmourne Sword from World of Warcraft's Lich King. I'm guessing Blizzard probably didn't like this reference. Similarly, there was the Soul Scythe, which was also added as an unobtainable item in the 1.2 update, and this one was removed in the 1.2.2 update. Once again, this was probably removed due to it being, I guess, too much of a reference to a similar looking weapon from the anime Soul Eater, after which I'm sure this was named. And once again, with the same old song and dance, there was also a regular scythe that was added and removed around this same time frame, once again, likely due to it being a reference to Soul Eater. Biome key molds in a jungle, crimson, hollowed, frozen, and corrupted variant were once found in the game as well, with the purpose of crafting biome keys to open biome chests. These were eventually also removed in all versions but the 3DS one, in favor of the keys just dropping instead of needing to craft them using these molds. Then next, there's the Boring Bow, that based on its ID placement, it's believed to also have been meant for the Dungeon Defenders 2 crossover event. Next, there's this Akram mask that has also been removed, at least in the console and mobile versions of the game. And speaking of the mobile version, let's also show some love to the mobile gamers out there, as there are several things that were exclusive to that version, but have also been removed. For items, there was a mysterious package that definitely resembles that of an Amazon box. This was to summon a pet drone that would apparently drop a book every few minutes, and it is believed that this was going to be an exclusive item for those that bought Terraria through Amazon. Similarly, there was a pot of gold item that spawned in Leprechaun O'Fife, who would have had a chance to drop some coins. Five rainbow pieces, which have also been removed, were needed to craft this, and these were only seen falling from the sky, much like fallen stars, during the St. Patrick's Day season in the game. Ultimately though, as of the mobile version 1.3.0.7, the pot of gold has been replaced by the gold bunny. Oddly, the guide NPC mentions that the rainbow pieces are part of a greater object called the Prism Danan, but there's no trace of such an item or object in the game. Next up is an entire scrapped seasonal event as well as its associated content. This content includes a cut McMoney Pants NPC, a flying mythical wyvern enemy, as well as three items, a red envelope, a firecracker, and my favorite, the mythical costume. And to this day, it is unclear why exactly this event was never implemented. And since the files were removed from the game, I doubt it will ever end up seeing the light of day. And then lastly for the mobile version are two structure types that could be generated in the world, but have since also been removed. First is a Sanctum that used to appear in the jungle biome, basically a larger version of a jungle shrine. And secondly, there was also the Heart Shrine, a smallish heart-shaped structure that could be generated in the snow biome. 
These heart shrines were guaranteed to contain two crystal hearts as well as a frozen chest. Not bad. Next up, although these aren't unused or anything, there are several new secret seeds for world generation that have been added with the latest updates. First is a world known as Drunk World, which can be created by using the seed 05162020, which is a reference to May 16th, 2020, the date of Journey's End's release. In short, this Drunk World basically just results in both the Crimson and the Corruption Evil spawning at the same time in the world, in addition to several other smaller changes. Then next, by entering Not The Bees as a seed, a world will be generated that is mostly bee-related with bee items, biomes, etc. The title is a pretty obvious reference to Nicolas Cage's infamous line from the 2006 movie The Wicker Man. And the last currently discovered secret seed is called For The Worthy, and this essentially increases the game's difficulty a lot. It is even referenced internally as the Get Good World. Interestingly, For the Worthy is also a reference to the once unused item, the Red Potion, whose tooltip read, Only for those who are worthy. The Red Potion was also unobtainable all the way up until this last update, and it's only found in either this seed or the drunken one I mentioned earlier. So I guess most people still won't ever see it uh, unless they try these two worlds. And last up for this video are Terraria's debug features. Now these are super easy to access on PC and aren't a big secret or anything, but a debug feature is a debug feature, so let's cover it. By pressing F7, a bunch of debug text will pop up on screen, and I believe these time the rendering process for various things such as different tiles and lighting. Similarly, pressing F8 will bring up some multiplayer debug info, if playing single player though, these all appear at zero. Pressing Shift F9 cycles through the game's four different lighting settings, white, color, retro, and trippy. And lastly, I guess most PC games have this now, but by pressing F10 you can toggle a small FPS counter on the bottom left of the screen. Nothing too crazy like I said, but at the end of the day I still really like when developers leave little debugging things like this for us to see. Anyways guys, with that wraps up this Terraria Lost Bits video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to drop a like down below and check out some more of my Lost Bits videos like the one I made on Minecraft by clicking on the card right here. Also, subscribe here for future videos, swing by my other social media things which are all linked down in the description below, and if you want to support the channel, check out my merch over at tetrabitgaming.com, or consider becoming the latest member of the Bit Club to get some nifty extra channel perks. If you're interested, click on the join button below for more information. Anyways guys, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.